I just wanted to just touch bases with you to ask for your, to seek your wise counsel about a situation I've been dealing with, specifically with gaslighting, with um, mm. one of my um, closest relatives. And um, it's really been um, a very painful kind of dynamic that I've encountered with this relative because we're almost like sisters, but whenever I have to confront her about a way that she's mistreated me, with, perhaps with a toxic pattern, of, of mistreatment, or maybe if she hasn't been forthcoming about telling me, for example, about um, there was this one instance where her children, a couple of them had come down with a flesh eating bacteria, a really crazy, you know, affliction out of nowhere. And she was. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, hold on a second. Issues. I know. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Who came down with a flesh eating bacteria? <laughs> Well, a couple of her kids, I mean, she has beautiful children and we're close, we're all like really close, but the problem is she's not forthcoming about when those situations arise and she, she's willing to put other people in harm's way. Uh, oh, in order it'd be like having COVID and not telling people. Right. It's like something like that. I mean, it, it's just really not good. And she hasn't done that every time, but at the time she had, at the time she, she every had, time, how many times do they get flesh no, eating no. bacteria over at their house? Oh no, 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 <laughs> no, that, that was one instance, but she, she had to call the, she actually we need has, to call the San Fernando <laughs> Valley, like, you know, <laughs> hazmat people. <laughs> I mean, oh she, she's put, it was, okay, she's putting you guys in danger a lot. Well, yes. I mean, unfortunately, because she's really wanted to kind of had, was desperate to have that fellowship and support in those instances. Yeah. So she was willing to kind of put us in harm's well, way and be manipulative yeah, that's not okay. in order to gain right. that fellowship. So is that time. the big issue? Yeah. You've got this one relative, everything's fine in the relationship, yeah. but she puts you in harm's way. Is that, is that the, where we are? It's a little more, more of a struggle, honestly. There's also just – she has a way of being abrasive with, with not only me but other people. And um, I've to tolerated this for a really long time, much longer than I should have. And I, I, I have your book, the Boundary Book, and a couple of other books that I've read from your other uh, colleague, Steve Arterburn. And I've, so I've been working through these issues. But I finally now have gained the courage, I think, last year during COVID to kind of really speak up. For, and just say this is not okay, and and I so I had a conversation with her about it, and she exploded on me, and I did my very best to be as okay. So um, take take me back to take take me back, and I want you to make this as brief as possible because I want to get to the sure. to the question. But I'm her, sure. okay. You're going to tell right. me this, and so so hello, yeah. hi Maria, how are you doing? And you said what? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. And how are you? Oh, you know, other than we the, we, we got this flesh eating thing. Now it's it's wiped out half the house, and so we're we're we kind of did a lean to you know keep the rain out. But other than that, I've still got all my limbs. So what's going on? Well, you know, remember the last time you came to visit, and and I I didn't I should have brought this up to you at the time when you were here visiting, but. Uh, there was just a real uh, a real pro a challenge that I had with the way that you did not disclose what was happening with your children's health, because that could have affected our health. And you know that we have a family member here that, that has sensitive health issues, and so that was very concerning for me. Ah! she did. <laughs> It was awful. It was probably it was worse than that. It was actually <laughs> worse, worse than, than that. that. I'm not exaggerating. So, it was worse than that. Doctor, what did I she do? So, what did she say? Now let's flip the. You be her. What did she, what did she say? She went off the charts. She actually like, say just blew up at me like like what, a grenade. What'd she say? It was like a, she like went she off say? like a grenade. She. What she said. Oh, what are, you, what are you talking about? I never, I never put people in harm's way like that. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? And she started screaming and get, she became really hysterical and started crying in front of her kids. She made a scene in front of the kids and 
I was just mortified. I thought, wait a minute, why are you? I said, why are you screaming and crying at me right now? I said, I'm trying to. Oh, so y'all did this in person. It wasn't on the phone. You did this in person. Oh, it was on the phone, actually. It was over oh, the phone. Oh, okay. It wasn't All right. So person. I get it. So I get it now. She, she doesn't like that. Um, Yeah. So what's the question? This is pretty straightforward. Yeah. It's really what's stressful because we have a, a strong bond, but. I'm struggling because I drew that line. Well, it sounds like a trauma bond. It sounds like a trauma bond in a way or a traumatic bond. So what is the question? What's the question? What's the question? Well, I struggle, Dr. Dr. Cloud, with post-grief syndrome. And maybe I'm just making that term up, but I have like severe. I think you did because grief is post. But but what do you what are you meaning by that? Yes. so I really, after I draw a line and I draw a boundary and I'm firm and I do it as lovingly as well, possible. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I um, didn't hear a boundary. What was the boundary? I didn't hear a boundary. I just heard you telling her that 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 you didn't like this. Well, I, I told mean, that's her kind at, of a at boundary, the end of the but... conversation. I said I will not tell her. I cannot talk to you if you're going to scream and yell at me. I'm going to have to disconnect from this conversation because she's oh, going good on you. and on. She kept escalating. And I said, I love you. This is not me telling you you're a bad person. This is me telling you there's some issues with your behavior towards me that needs to be resolved. Um, I'm not saying you're a bad person. And I kept saying it over and over again while she was screaming and hysterical and crying. And I said, but until you can listen to me um, without accusing me and manipulating the truth, I can't have a conversation. I will not be able to talk to you. Okay, that's not bad. And so that's how the conversation ended. I had to let her go. I said, I'm now going to disconnect from this conversation because it was going in a really ballistic direction and I didn't want to be pulled out of my spirit. So. Great. So, so give me a question. Okay. Getting up against the clock. Give me a question. I love everything so so far, except I wouldn't, I'd stay away from terms like until you stop manipulating the truth, because that's descriptive. That's not factual. Okay. So a factual thing would be when you get into it and she says, well, I didn't do that. And you say, well, here's what you did. You came over and we spent time together and the children played together and there was no mention that they had an infectious disease. See, that's a fact. So just in the future, make sure you, you make sure you stay with objective facts because those aren't arguable, but manipulating the truth, that's really hard to get our arms around. It's just a little tip. But you're doing great so far. So what is your question? So now it's two months after the fact, and she is still um, cutting me completely off. And doesn't how is she could, how is she cutting you off? Because you've reached out to her. I actually what happened was she um, before she because she lives out of the country currently because her husband works kind of bicontinentally between this country and another country. And so when um right before she left because she was visiting in august you know with the family and so she basically said i want you to come out with the girls we usually do a girls night every time she comes out to kind of just celebrate her and give her love before she has to go back to the other country and so reluctantly i went to that event only because i felt like the lord was telling me in prayer you need to go so um i I really didn't want to go because i just felt so disrespected and she yeah. basically just cold shoulder feet the whole don't you, night. Don't you hate it when another. there's something you really, don't you hate it when there's something you really want to do and, and God tells you to do it? <laughs> that always bugs me. Yeah. It's hard. I know. Especially when you're so, you know, but I knew he knows better and I, and I thought, you know, I, I don't know. want to have a bitter root. I know. You know? I know. So he what, so better, you win. And I don't, so what, yeah. so what's the question? So I, went, I need a question because we're out of it time. not pleasant. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I just, how can I deal with this grief? Like, because it's not resolved and it doesn't look like she's going to kind of want to resolve this. And so how can I deal with the grief of, of where things are and with the boundaries that I've now exacted in this situation? Well, the way you deal with grief is, um, if that's the question, I don't, I'm not certain we're quite there yet, but the way you d- you're going to deal with grief is, um, I'm going to gift you an all access path to boundaries.me. And there's a bunch of courses on there that you can watch for free. So how about that? But, but here's kind of, here's kind of a few things that I want you to, 
to think about in this. One of my favorite verses is weep with those who weep. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that that in a corollary verses say things like comfort the brokenhearted, for example, one of the reasons that's one of my favorite verses is it's almost like a textbook on neurobiology that when you're going through grief and there is someone with you that connects with you and cares and understands, then there are literally brain changes that happen because somebody's sharing your grief with you. They're weeping with you. And that actually changed the, changes the metabolic system of your psychology and your neurobiology to being able to work with the grief. It's kind of like pouring Drano in your garbage disposal when it's all stopped up. It's able to get it working again. So the first thing that's important is make sure you're getting with somebody who really understands how difficult this has been and what the loss means to you. Secondly, be able to put words to it and name it very specifically about where what she did that has hurt you. And thirdly, make sure when you get to that point that you've dealt with any kind of, are, are there any, is there any hope here that I'm still kind of holding on to? And is that realistic? If it is realistic, then taking the proper objective stances and steps to bring that hope to a reality. Or if it's not, then make sure you've accepted, I really have to let this go. And then next, use that energy and get involved somewhere else in life. If you do that, then you're going to be able to sadly wave her goodbye and say, I hope you have a nice life. Well, that's really good. That, well, I, I really appreciate your wisdom. And I can see how that could really help me with this situation. And I still, I'm just so grateful because this has been wearing on me. And just being able it's to terrible. connect with you today is just a big prayer answer. It really is. Well, good. Here's one thing I would do is maybe make one more tip and say, you know, when I saw you, you know, we had this kind of argument and then we hung up and we didn't talk after that. And then I saw you and didn't feel like we were kind of our regular selves. And um, I really would like to, I'd, I'd like to resolve this between the two of us so that we can continue to be, be friends and so if you would be open to listening to each other and getting together, I would like to do that, A. B, if, if we don't do well there and then, then I'd like to take the next step and see if we can bring someone else in to help us. That could be somebody in our circles, somebody out of our circles, it could be a counselor. But I'd really like to go the next step and if we can't do it alone, then get some help because you are important to me and I'd like to resolve this and extend that invitation. And then if she says, no, I think you've kind of pretty much fulfilled your, your uh, duty as it were. Mm. All right. Mm. That will take even more courage, but I think I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. look at it this way. Um, and you don't have to, I mean, it's fine. She already but I, I kind of, that's the way I'd like to behave, you know, yeah, unless there's some reason not to, and sometimes there are. Um, but let me say one word about the courage, and then we got to go. Um, what are you afraid of? Usually oh, we have to have courage when we're afraid. Huh? Oh, right. Well, I'm, I mean, I feel like I'm, do, I'm afraid of, of the abandonment of just losing the relationship altogether. Okay, well, hang on a second. If, you, if you're doing the things that I said, if you got the people with you and you're getting your conversation ready and you're naming what she's done and all of that, you might be abandoned by her, but you won't fall into a black hole because you're landing in a safety net. So I think that oh, if that's the big fear, that's what I would make sure of that. Um, you know, the worst thing that we can do sometimes or the hardest thing we can do is in a relationship when we don't have anywhere to fall. You know, it'd be like there right. it'd be like a trapeze artist with no net underneath them. We were meant mm -hmm. in life to 
one of my favorite verses in Ecclesiastes 4, it says that, that woe to him who walks alone because there's no one there and they fall down, you know, to pick him up or when they get cold to hold them and wrap them together to warm him up and, and, and return on their labor. It's better when you have two rather than one. And then it says this, and a cord of three is not easily broken. So if you have a couple of people, not just one good support person, but a couple of them, you won't believe what happens to your whole system in terms of how it gets strengthened and the less fear you will have when you have a cord of three. That's what is so powerful about community. And I believe that a dyadic, a one-on-one support system is never enough if we only have one person in our life is supporting us because I think that we were created by a Trinitarian God who lives in a group. And I think the group has the power and that's why family is so important and community is so important and a church is so important because it's the tribe that has the power for the individual. So that's what I would suggest to you. That's really powerful, Dr. Cloud. I, I, I'm just blown away right now just thinking about that and well, how, you, how you extrapolated that to the Holy Spirit and the Trinity. That's amazing. Well, it's just, you know, you just got to read the book. <laughs> the Bible is pretty amazing. If you read it, right? Okay, I got to run. Oh, Thank it you is. for your call. And, Thank you. And talk to Al Thank because so I want to give you a, gift you a subscription to boundaries.me and also um, in there. Uh, and make sure she gets this as well. Alby is the, we have a two hour webinar called um, The Art of Confrontation. And it'll give you a lot of principles to go and confront people well and not in ways sometimes that don't go so well. 